the broad heading of this chapter alcohols phenols and ethers now how do we go about understanding now this is the format uh, with which we will be uh, going ahead with the class going ahead not only with this class but going ahead with every chapter so we'll be answering a few questions I'll just try to add people here few people are trying to still add on all right so this is the content flow this is the flow with which every chapter's content would move we will be answering three questions three basic questions what how and why now what under what we'll be looking at what these compounds are and we look at the types and classification what are the various types of such compounds that we know that comes under the first question which is what the second is how now under how we look at two things nomenclature and preparation how do we name these compounds and how do we prepare these compounds and the last question that we will try to answer is why under why we will look at two things properties properties both physical as well as chemical and then we look at uses why do i need to study these compounds in the first place so i would want i would throw open this slide for you for a few moments so that you can look at the flow this is the flow with which we will be going ahead for each and every chapter all right so once we have understood the content flow the flow with which we'll be going let's go to the first question that we would like to answer the first question that we would like to answer is what what are alcohols phenols and ethers so i have written the structures here yeah? the structures of each of these compounds i want you to look at these structures and try to understand what these are now last year when we did alkanes we looked at the general formula of an alkane so the general formula the way in which i can write it we can write it as rh where r is nothing but my alkyl group to an alkyl group if a hydrogen is attached we call such a compound as an alkane now when i look at this compound here now what is different when i compare it with an alkane now alkane would have been rh now here instead of an h i have somebody joined to r and who is that that's attached it is my oh group so oh group is attached to an r group or in other words the hydrogen atom of an alkane is replaced by an oh group if such a thing happens then i result in this structure this structure is called as an alcohol then coming to the second structure here now you are familiar with the structure without the oh if instead of oh if i would have add h here then this would have become your benzene now from benzene if i remove one of the hydrogens and replace it with oh then this compound becomes phenol and coming to the last one r o r dash now you can see a similarity to this compound here so r o h if i replace the hydrogen of an alcohol with another r group i get the structure r o r dash now when i get that i call this compound as an ether so this basically addresses the first question what these compounds are or if i have to look at uh, putting them in words alcohols are nothing but hydroxy derivatives of alkanes derivative means something from which it is obtained so when i replace a hydrogen with a hydroxy group in an alkane i get an alcohol how do i get a phenol phenols are nothing but hydroxy derivatives of benzene if i replace hydrogen of a benzene with oh then i get a phenol and coming to 
ethers. What are ethers? Ethers are nothing but alkoxy derivatives of alkenes. So alkoxy is nothing but RO. So RO group is substituted in place of a hydrogen of an alkene. So this is answering the first question, which is what? So alcohols are what? Alcohols are hydroxy derivatives of alkanes. Phenols are what? Phenols are hydroxy derivatives of benzene. Ethers are what? Ethers are alkoxy derivatives of alkanes. Then coming to the next uh, step of our understanding, what are the various types or what are the various classifications? We look at alcohols and phenols first. Now, when you see the structures which are there, when you observe them closely, you can see what is the difference between the individual structures which are mentioned here. Now, when I look at this alcohol and this phenol, there is only one OH group. When I look at this alcohol and this phenol, there are two OH groups. When I look at this alcohol and this phenol, there are three OH groups. So what is the basis of classification here? The basis of classification is the number of OH groups which are attached to an alcohol or a phenol. If there's only one OH group, we call such an alcohol as a monohydric phenol or a monohydric alcohol. If I have two OH groups, it's a dihydric alcohol or a dihydric phenol. If I have three OH groups, it's a trihydric alcohol or a trihydric phenol. So this is the first basis of classification, which is simple, which is based on the number of OH groups which are there in my compound. So if I have to put this in words, this is what I have based on the number of OH groups, alcohols and phenols can be broadly classified into three types, monohydric, dihydric, and we call in general polyhydric, those which contain more than three OH groups. Okay, so this is the first basis or the first type in with respect to the classification. And coming to the second one, the basis remains the nature of the carbon atom containing the OH group. Now, based on the nature of the carbon atom that contains the OH group, we have few more types. This is something that you have already come across in the previous chapter in haloalkanes, haloarenes, primary, secondary, and tertiary alcohols. Now, who is a primary alcohol? A primary alcohol is somebody where the OH group is attached to a carbon, which is in turn attached to one more carbon atom. Such a compound is a primary Can you repeat? Alcohol. Yeah. So a primary alcohol is an alcohol where OH group is attached to a carbon, which is in turn attached to one more carbon atom. Such an alcohol is called as a primary alcohol. Who is a secondary alcohol? A secondary alcohol is an alcohol where OH group is attached to a carbon which is in turn attached to two more carbon atoms. Clear? So if OH is attached to a carbon which is in turn attached to two more carbon atoms, then we call such an alcohol as a secondary alcohol. Then coming to a tertiary alcohol, OH is attached to a carbon which is in turn attached to three more carbon atoms. Such an alcohol is called as a tertiary alcohol. Now this is similar to what we studied in the previous chapter. Primary alkyl halide, secondary alkyl halide or a tertiary alkyl halide. So this is exactly similar here. here instead of the halogen, I have OH as the functional group. So this is the second basis of classification. And what is the basis? The based on the nature of the carbon atom containing the OH group. Now, as I mentioned in the beginning of the lecture, you don't need to write down all of these. I'll be sharing this as a PPT, or you can definitely look at your textbook, your NCRT textbook. My PPT is based on your NCRT textbook. You will get the literature 
very much there right now your focus should only be on understanding looking at the structures on the screen and what i tell you uh, through my uh, through my uh, uh, speaker all right this is the next set of structures again this is based on the nature of the carbon atom that is containing the oh group we have already come across similar structures in the previous chapter in the previous chapter instead of oh you had a halogen there same way here as well instead of an oh you had a halogen instead of an oh you had a halogen now by now if you would have understood what happened in the previous chapter if you really focused on the previous chapter you will know these by their names by their common names in the first case oh is attached to a carbon which is in turn attached to a sp2 carbon now in the first year we looked at hybridization sp3 means a carbon is only surrounded by single bonds sp2 means a carbon is surrounded by a double bond sp means a carbon is surrounded by a triple bond so here when i look at the first structure oh is attached to an sp3 carbon which is in turn attached to an sp2 carbon now when i look at this structure this is pretty similar to the first one i'll just admit a few people yeah oh is attached to an sp3 carbon which is in turn attached to an sp2 carbon this and this are very similar except that i have a benzene ring here other than that the environment around the oh is exactly the same then coming to the last one oh is attached directly to an sp2 hybridized carbon yeah so this one the third one is quite different compared to the previous two ones now as i told you in the previous chapter we would have already come across the common names of these i am sure by now you know it if you do not know look at the screen all right so this is what i have a lilac benzylic and vinylic the first two structures where the oh group is attached to an sp3 carbon which is then in turn attached to an sp2 carbon comes into the category of allylic alcohol or benzylic alcohol the last structure where the oh group was directly attached to the sp2 hybridized carbon is a vinylic alcohol now this is similar to what we studied allylic halide benzylic halide vinylic halide here instead of a halide we just have an alcohol everything else remains the same all right so if you have to look at uh, what we have done so far in summary we looked at the classification of alcohols based on the number of oh groups i will have a monohydric a dihydric or a trihydric so or a polyhydric based on the number of oh groups then based on the nature of the carbon to which oh is bonded i have primary secondary and tertiary now if primary secondary tertiary is based on the nature of the carbon to which my oh is attached then coming to the other three types allylic vinylic and benzylic okay so this, this is with respect to whether the oh is attached to an sp3 carbon which is in turn attached to an sp2 carbon or whether oh is directly attached to an sp2 carbon so this is with respect to the classification of alcohols and phenols in coming to classification of ethers now i have four structures in front of you i want you to observe these four structures closely and check if there are any similarities between the structures here i'll give you a moment look at these structures and find out whether there are any similarities among the structures which are here all right super so if you observe closely 
we looked at the general formula of an ether the general formula of an ether is r o r dash now when i look at this compound and this compound they are similar now why are these two similar these two are similar because r and r dash is the same r and r dash is the same look at these two structures here these two structures are similar too why because r and r dash are different r and r dash are different yeah, so this is the basis with which we can classify ethers based on the nature of the r groups which are attached to the oxygen atom whether the r groups are the same or whether the r groups are different so how do i how do we name them this is what this is how we name them if both r and r dash are the same then such ethers are called as simple or symmetrical ethers if r and r dash are different we call it as a mixed or an unsymmetrical ether so the types or classification of ethers is very simple it's based on the nature of the r groups which are attached if both r and r dash are the same we call it as a simple or a symmetrical ether if both r and r dash are different we call it as a mixed or unsymmetrical ether so we looked at what now we look at how and under how the first thing that we will try to understand is nomenclature how do i name compounds we'll start with alcohols first i want you to understand that every organic compound has two names iupac name and the common name just it's very similar to how we have we also have two names one name that we write officially and one by which we are called at home so likewise each organic compound has two names iupac name and the common name so i want you to focus on this slide very important in the iupac system alcohols are named by replacing the last word of the corresponding alkane by ol the last letter sorry replacing the last letter e of the corresponding alkane by ol if i have methane methane is ch4 if i replace one of the hydrogens of methane with oh then i get an alcohol so how do i name it methane is the alkane i remove the last letter that is e and replace it with ol then what will it become it will become methanol likewise ethanol likewise propanol and so on in general we call them as alkanols right coming to the common system in the common system alcohols are named as alkyl alcohol so we looked at the general formula of an alcohol which is roh r is nothing but your alkyl group so depending upon who is that alkyl group you will be naming it as the corresponding alkyl alcohol if r is ch3 then we call it as methyl alcohol if r is c2h5 we call it as ethyl alcohol if r is c3h7 we call it as propyl alcohol and so on i'll just keep the slide open for a couple of moments for you to just understand how we write it all right then so under iupac system we give the name as alkanol under common system we give the name as alkyl alcohol now i want you to write down these two names under iupac system write alkanol under common system write alkyl alcohol i want you to write this down under iupac system alkanol under common system alkyl alcohol
I hope you are done writing. If you are done writing, the reason why I made you write it is because, yeah, because of this. This is what I want you to do right now. Now I have a few structures which are listed here. I want you to write down each of these structures in your book and corresponding to the structure, write down the common name and the IUPAC name based on what we have done so far. Write down the common name, write down the IUPAC name with respect to each one of these compounds. I want you to write down the structures first. Write down all these structures first. Once you are done writing these structures, I would want you to raise your hand, indicating that you have written all these structures. Structure 4 and 5 is the same. Yeah, there's a mistake here while it was being exported. So structure 4 and 5 is the same. So you can just write any one of them. So I'll keep this slide open. Once you are you're finished writing down these structures, I want you to acknowledge the same by raising your hand. Yeah, I can already see two people raising your hands. Thank you. 10, 11, 12, 13. Yeah. 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 Thank you. I'll keep this slide on for a few more moments. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. I can see a few more people. I'll just keep this slide open for one more minute. The ones who joined in late, I've told everyone here that I'll be sharing the PPT so that you don't need to bother about writing 